Um, right then, so the, the whole point of this lecture is to go over um, how to make uh, cubes that um, you can change the shape of and get them to have different behaviors such as either rotating like this, um, spiraling and going up and down, having a certain uh, amount of delay um, and be, you'd be able to choose how far they move, what direction they move and how long they take to get there. Um, so if I uh, play this as well, um, I've also put in the logic uh, into these um, so that when they hit me, I die. Um, but I'll show you how to uh, make that logic uh, enabled or disabled. Um, when I look at one of these cubes that I've uh, created, uh, such as this one, it has how much damage to send to the player. So if I want it to be a lift, I would probably want to send zero damage to the player. Um, the rotation rate of it, um, and uh, obviously how much it will rotate along the x-axis, the uh, y-axis, and then the z-axis. Um, you've got pivot translation, and that will change the location of this pivot, um, as where, um, whether it is over here or over here, depending on where this pivot is moved to. So this one is being moved 500 centimeters off to the x and y. Um, so that means that it will start pivoting from uh, 500 over here and then 500 over here. So that is where the pivot is um, located once it starts moving. The new location is the location that it will move towards. Um, so it's uh, it, when the game starts to play, it looks at the location where it is and stores it as its initial location and then moves it 500 units in the X, 0 units in the Y, and 500 units in the Z. So it will go, um, as I'm on 100, it will go from 1, 2, 4, 5, 1, 2, 5. So it will go to there. And if I control Z that, it is back to where it was. Then I simulate this. You can see it do that. Um, the next thing it has is a time to wait. So if I increase this um, and now simulate, it will wait one second there before it moves back. And then the final one, which is the, uh, the most important part of this, is the speed percentage. So uh, it is all based off a timeline that uh, takes one second to complete. Um, if you wanted a lift that travels um, maybe uh, 500 meters, um, having it take one second, uh, so if I increased this to be uh, 5,000 and 5,000, and then did this, it moves pretty fast, which could fling your player off into oblivion and uh, end up with gameplay results that maybe you don't want. You might want something uh, doing, doing it that fast, but if you wanted it to take longer, so we've made that five times, uh, no, ten times the length. So if I uh, divided that speed multiplier by ten, now it will move a tenth of the speed. And then it wait there for um it may potentially this is the other thing that you need to oh no it doesn't have a, I, I was thinking that this speed percentage would affect the delay but it doesn't affect the delay it only affects its translation um speed between the new locations so you don't need to adjust how long it waits um this is just changing the uh, the movement speed um just as uh, just the same, if you only want it to move full amount, um, you could have it very very slowly, or you could uh, put in a large number there, and then it'll do it really really fast. Um, then there, do that, and then. It, it has flexibility to do a lot of things. Um, it's a fairly simple bl uh, blueprint, so I'm going to go through it step by step now. Um, and then I will show you how to create uh, your own.
I'll go through the logic that we're about to create. So this is the, the main logic for the lift. And this is, uh, there is also some const uh, construction script. And then there are a few uh, elements in the uh, components that you need to make sure that you have. Um, but uh, so the construction script graph um, has it's a reference to itself. It finds the axis location and motes that to a variable as the initial location. And you can see that here as a vector. It then progresses to do the next thing of uh, grabbing the rotating movement component, and it uh, sets the rotation rate. And the rotation rate is a public variable. And we have uh, wrote in the tooltip that it sets the rotation rate of the block. Um, and this uh, being made public is what allows us to edit in the editor so that when we uh, copy these out, I can now independently change this variable here and it will do something slightly different um, to the other one uh, without having to make a whole new block. And then finally, the pivot translation from the rotating movement variable. And the pivot translation is what moves the gizmo around um, and so that it rotates from a different location. The event graph. Um, we start with event begin play. Um, every blueprint should have one of these in uh, by default. It might be grayed out slightly for you, um, but it will be near the center of, of the blueprint. And um, you, it all emanates from this. Um, first thing that we need to create is um, a custom time dilation. And this is how uh, we are changing the movement speed of this object. We are giving it its own uh, time in the game universe. And um, to do that, you get a reference to yourself. Um, you have speed, um, which is a float variable, which you would have to create and make public. This one is yellow because it's missing for tooltip. So you could write there, sets the speed um, of time uh, for the um, And then you have a flip-flop node here. Um, to get this custom, I uh, will go through how to um, create this from scratch um, in a moment. I'm just going through the flow of logic first for those of you who are more confident with Blueprint. Um, flip-flop uh, fires through A first, then B, and then A again, and then B. It flip-flops between the two executables, as, as can be seen if you highlight over it. Alternates between A and B outputs starting with A. We have a timeline in here with a very simple alpha track. Um, so that is a float uh, starting at zero and going through to one, one. So two points that it um, blends between. Um, I have set this to be auto curve, um, but if you wanted it to be a more linear curve, you could do that. You could even create another float track in here and um, then put in uh, zero in here, zero here, one here, and one here. Um, and then this would be um, uh, available for you to um, use here to swap between. Uh, there's a useful node called select. And then what you can do is put both of these options into here. And you could create then a new variable, an integer. Uh, this is just an example of like how to expand on this. Um, and this could be a uh, selector. Uh, and you would make that variable and then choose between linear or smooth. Get the selector and put that into the index. And when you put that into here, um, so into the lerp, uh, and then if we go back to this, if I file that, 
now I've got a selector that I can choose between. So zero would be smooth, one would be linear. Um, so I could, I don't know whether I can, yeah, I can break that. So that's something that I would probably have to clamp well, that, um, that integer. Um, but I can choose between zero and one, and it would change the way that the curve will translate either a smooth or a completely linear way, depending on how you want your lips to work. Um, but for now, I'm just going to do that. Um, but to stop that from being able to break, could just clamp this between zero and one. And now the, uh, the designer should not be able to does let you do that. Um, I think even if they go out of this value, the clamp actually um, cap it to round it to the nearest value. Um, I think potentially also go yeah slider range. You can do it in here. Zero and one. Try that. There we go. So now I can't go out of zero and one, even if I try to. So you don't actually have the clamp. You can just do that. I'd arrange it zero and one. Right, I delete that. Now, um, so yeah, the timeline blends between the initial location, which is what we got here. We uh, stored that as soon as the object is constructed to store that variable. And then the new location is uh, this variable here. And that is what we're going to add onto um, the initial location to move the lift uh, in its own local space. There is a delay. The time to wait um, for to fire this repeat function once this is finished, um, and then that is when it starts again to either reverse from the end or play from the start, and that is how long uh, you can change this value. Um, and this is also public here, so how long until platform returns? And finally, the other the final node is to grab the platform, which is just a static mesh. Um, I've used. The one meter cube, which comes with Unreal and applied the uh, master instance, the, the grid material to it. The reason why is because by default, the pivot point is in the center of the cube, um, which uh, is useful for when you want to make things that rotate from their center rather than have it, uh, figuring out the pivot translation from the corner. Um, it, it, it slightly more versatile having the pivot point in the center of the cube. Um, and then we are setting the world location uh, based off these on every frame update. So it is a fairly simple blueprint. Um, and if you want to expand on that, I would make uh, children of this. Um, but the, uh, the, the set, if you want it to be able to hurt the player, which uh, I've given it uh, that option. Uh, I have just created the same blueprint that we put into the def block. Um, on component hit, uh, does implement interface, a true or false, and then an effect health. Um, I have noticed some bugs with this, uh, with the hit, so um, I am going to improve on this as I go through. Um, but um, the, the idea is to use an uh, on component overlap and put on a box collision on top of this platform, which scales um, and it, you get a more consistent result. So I'm going to make this now from scratch um, uh, over here. So um, this is now how you would do this. So you would create a new blueprint class of type actor. And I would call this um, platform or no, movable uh, object or BP. Um, maybe even movable parent something if you're going to create children classes off this and uh, I'm going to save that and go into it so we need a few components we need a static mesh and this is uh, uh, fine to be the 1M cube um, I've got two in here because one is the one that I exported and has the pivot point in the corner here that's exactly what I don't want I want the Unreal version, which is like this. And then I will 
provide it with the um, the material um, like this. Uh, I'm then going to add on a box collision, and I'm going to set this to be 51, 51, 51, which makes it just slightly larger than the box um, by what by one centimeter. And because it's parented with the box, when I scale the box. The collision scales with it as well. The next thing uh, that I want to put onto this is a rotating movement component. And then I'm going to make uh, select the rotating movement component and just set it to be zero. going to go over to the construction script so construction script is different to the event graph the event graph runs in game whereas the construction script runs also in editor um, anything to do with time can't be uh, ran in a construction script anything that requires on frames being run but it can do things like such as setting variables um, so it's it's useful to have this uh, these things in here um, if you want them to be set even before the game has run so um what i'm going to do is just open up uh the other blueprint so i've got some reference so you can see what, uh, exactly what we're building in fact what i'm going to do is just copy this under here so i can make it full screen and then I'll show you exactly how. I'm. So, you start with to create self, type get a reference to self. And then drag out of the blue pin and start typing get actor location. And we are going to right click it and promote that to a variable. I'm going to call it initial location. Then uh, I'm using camel case here, so there isn't a space in there, but because I've done camel case, there is space. Um, drag it out, and I'm going to connect up the execute. That's the first thing that we do. We need to make this public and then say what it does sets the. Uh, no, we don't need to make this one public, sorry, um, uh, because this one will never change. Um, this one um, is just. Side it well, uh, telling the movable object blueprint exactly where it is in the world and storing it as a variable so that we can add to it later. That's why this one doesn't need to be public. The rotating movement needs to be dragged out from the component section, and then uh, from there we need to get rotation rate. Um, we don't want to get it, sorry, we set rotation rate. And then we want to promote that to a variable, and it's uh, we just want to call this rotation rate. We also need to get pivot translation and set that, and also right click that, promote it to a variable, and call that pivot translation. Um, typo. So these two. To be connected like that and connected up here. These ones do need to be public. So rotation rate and pivot translation, compile, save. Then what you can do with this is pivot translation moves the pivot of the object so that rotation is based off of a different location rotation rate sets the speed of rotation um, and then those two now are green tool the next part so go back to, um, here and just grab then grab and I'm just going to go back to all of this 
and then paste it. So it is a good idea, as you can see, um, this is all quite neat. Um, make sure that your blueprint is readable. It's a good habit to get into. Um, we do not need um, either of these uh, nodes here. We just need this grayed out event begin play print. Yeah, so we can see exactly what's going on. So, we're going to get a reference to ourselves. We are going to drag out from the blue pin and start typing custom. And near the bottom, you can see uh, custom dilation, custom time dilation. So, we're going to set the value of that. The custom time dilation is just um, very similar to the time dilation node, which sets uh, global time dilation but this is just for the object itself we're going to promote this to a variable and then we are going to call this um, I've called it speed percentage uh, because that's exactly what it is um, and then uh, don't worry about these errors here these will uh, fix as I uh, create this blueprint uh, you won't get these as you uh, compile the next thing is to flip flop out of here. Um, another uh, little tip as well is if you drag down, uh, click on this little um, option here, you can do a save on compile and do save on success only, which means that the game will uh, save a little, um, a little bit more often as long as you are creating good blueprint. Um, so it's a nice option to have on. We are going to uh, create a timeline. Uh, you, timelines are always at the bottom of the list when you type in timeline. And I'll call this uh, anim uh, or anim timeline. Even. And we will play from start and reverse from end. Um, we will create a custom event. So add custom event and we will call this repeat. Uh, I'm going to just put an X on the end because I've already got this custom event in down here, but I would just call it repeat for you. Put that into entering for flip flop as well. Then coming out of here, update, we want to set world location. Um, and want to do that for the static mesh. So set world location, and then it will connect up the target. Okay. Now, if you'd renamed your static mesh, um, this it might have been uh, it might have been called. So if I'd I'd renamed mine to platform before, um, it would be uh, for that. Uh, A little bit, so you can see. Um, so the next thing that we will need is a lerp, and we're going to need a lerp vector, and that is what we're going to feed into new location. So we're going to blend between two locations. Now, the first one is going to uh, be the initial location, definitely, because don't want it to move from where it was and then the next one needs to be the initial location plus a an adjusted value um, so the reason why we do it this way is so that we're not have to type in exactly where we want it into the world we're just adding on to the uh, existing location already so when we create a new variable here choose it to be a vector and call this new location. Put it here, get it, and plug it into there. So we are adding, I compile this. Uh, you can see we would add, if we want it to move up, we would just add 500 to the Z, and we know we're just adding that to its initial location. That's how it works. And then we will want to make this um, public. And it tells us that it's missing a tooltip. So this will be adds the location to the initial starting. 
adds adds the vector. Um, and then we now just need an alpha to drive this blend. Um, so we go to double click our timeline, and we don't. There's a few tracks that we could add, uh, create. Uh, but we're going to add a float track today, and I'm going to call this alpha track because it is essentially an alpha. It blends between zero and one. I'm going to press shift and highlight and uh, and click with my mouse and set that value to be zero and the um, so the time value to be zero and the value value to. Be zero. I'm going to shift click again and then do this one with one and one in the time and value. If it goes off screen, you can click these two arrows, and we can see that there is a um, blend here. Uh, I'm also going to add the functionality of the second track. So we're going to do a uh, alpha uh, track, and we're going to do this one smooth. Uh, I can type like that. Alpha track smooth, alpha track linear, uh, and then I will do exactly the same here. So it's zero, zero, one, and one. And I will just select one of these and change it to auto, and you can see now how the curve changes. You could do as many of these as you wanted to now, um, and uh, I'm just showing you how to uh, keep adding that. Um, so we're going to move this along make it a little later and I'm going to create a selector node here uh, we're going to promote, uh, we can't promote that to a variable so that here you know, if you change that from wildcard to uh, integer, we should be able to promote variable. And we go into um, track type, and I'm going to set the slider range to zero, and, and I'm going to put that in here, and then the return value to go into the alpha. Um, so in this tooltip, I will make it public. Uh, and I'm going to say zero equals linear, one equals smooth. Um, now we can change this uh, as we please. And then Finally, uh, after this is finished, so I'm going to move this over uh, a little bit more as well, just so it's even more, uh, even clearer for you to see. And I'm going to go unfinished, and I'm going to drag it up here. Drag out finished and type delay. And then uh, I'm going to promote this to a variable. And it is time to wait. And make that public time object will stay a cache. Type in as if it was variable. Then compile. Um, and then finally, uh, all of this now. So uh, all we need to do now after that delay all our eight. repeat x now that should be everything that you uh, everything you need to get this platform to move um, but to make this uh, damage somebody uh, or have the option to damage somebody we're going to get our box collision and this is how to improve on the hit. Um, so if I do on component, begin overlap, click plus, it uh, adds it here. And we've all created our interfaces for uh, characters to hurt. So if we type in does, 
implement interface uh, and then other actor and then the interface will be i damageable branch out of here quick true or false check so if it does pull from that other actor effect health from i damage then finally promote this to a variable and then damage to then public explain to the designer who would be using this what this does damage to apply to collided object um, and then that should be fine. We could comment this out. Okay, damage. And comment that and then say uh, movement logic. So when you have very complex uh, blueprints that you, you need to zoom out, you can find exactly where you have put particular uh, nodes. To create a comment box, if, uh, if, I've, if you've never seen that before, it's just drag over what you want and press C, and it will uh, create a comment box. Start typing it. You can also colour these, colour you like, um, and so you can have a sort of uh, language for um, commenting for you to visually see. You can change um, the size of a font. Um, you can. Uh, you, you little like. and you can also make it so if you just select this comment you can move the whole things that are inside of it or you do this comment and then just move that um so that is essentially the end of how to make this now if you've got a good imagination you should be able to um, figure out exactly how you would uh, use this. So now you can just scale this uh, to be whatever shape that you want. So this could be a hazard that moves up and down. If I simulate like this, yeah. Um, now there are ways that you can modify this, um, which is what I'm going to go over now. Um, if you wanted it to be a bit more visually interesting, you can create a material. Um, and if I go into this and just going to create like a sort of laser material. Um, so I'm going to make this uh, unlit and I'm going to also go down into lighting and make it a dynamic area light as well so it lights the environment save that second and then i'm just going to create a few nodes so a multiply to multiply the color that comes out of this i'm going to convert this to a parameter and call this color try again Try naming it there instead. Um, I'm doing the American spelling uh, on purpose uh, just because it seems to be a little bit easier when you work with the real engine. Um, then I'm going to promote B to a parameter and I'm going to say brightness. Um, I will put that into color um, and we'll grab one node uh, called Brunel. Uh, if I start previewing this, it does some camera logic uh, where it says when you are looking directly at it, um, uh, make it uh, make it dark. Well, it depends on how you use it, but um, it has a blend between black and white, um, and white is on the edges. So if I were to put this on a cube, it can see if it's um, an oblique angle. 
um, it will show white. If it's straight on, it will show a sort of grey. And you can mess around with the exponents um, so, and it will change the way it works. So if I do zero, then it will go between uh, off and on uh, completely. So change that now. Yeah. Uh, and the way I'm going to use this is with a, another lerp node. And I'm going to put that into the alpha. And I could then put this into here. And now if I make this a bright color, so I'm just going to make this red and then I'm just going to drop the saturation to be 0.95 then I'm going to make the brightness 10 see this looks like when you view it at an angle it just changes uh, the way it looks as you view it from different angles which uh, helps on things like laser beams and stuff like that um, you could also um, so what, what it's doing hang on here to zero. That's what. There we go. So now you get a bit more contrast the edges. Um, you could blend that with a separate color as well, um, but I just want it to be off on the edges. Right. In. So the uh, what I'm going to do? Create child blueprint of this class. And call it uh, laser. Uh, and go into here, select the platform, and um, I think that material was human, which was a bad name. Um, and I'm also going to scale this down here. Okay. Um, in fact, actually, I want it that way. Um, I've also made sure that the, my, my object is movable. I don't know. Um, some It should come in movable by default, but if you ever get in any errors saying that um, your object isn't movable, but you're static man. Um And now, when I drag this out, oops, uh, up this. and then... Now we've got a laser beam that uh, avoided damage to the player. Um, I would also uh, just double check that uh, the variables that we made in here are um, what you want them to be. Point two is a nice time to wait. Damage to send should probably be zero by default. Speed percentage should probably be one by default, um, as in one hundred percent. Track type, uh, time to wait, a new location should be uh, fine. Yeah, all of those are fine. Um, yeah. um, the other type of logic might be that this moves automatically. So it is now up to you to figure out uh, how to um make this maybe if you wanted a lift uh so we've got something that we can step onto if i uh, were to go in here how to make this movement logic instead of event begin play we have this on component begin overlap uh so you could have um oh yeah can't copy that out but instead of damaging the player um, if you know it's a lift it probably doesn't want to damage the player so could uh, have it be um, yeah, instead of event begin play get rid of that uh, component begin overlap here um, you might not want to have the repeating you might want it to you might have the player step on it or you might want a End of your lap, and you could put that in here. This isn't for you to copy off right now, like as you're watching it, it's just for you to think about ways to change it. So, you might not need repeat anymore, 
Um, really don't need any of that. Uh, I would just have this play or reverse. And then now it's uh, you would just have to do a check as to whether or not um, actor you could do a simple cast to your uh, third person character or you could create an interface like we did with uh, eye damageable uh, you could be uh, you could just create a interface uh, to put into your player so you could um, add a new one here uh, no not a just want to create a new interface um, that is interactable for your platforms and then and then um the uh then you could do a does implement does implement interface and then you can see you can choose just as we did with the uh damage interface um but that sort of go uh, is for you to figure out um and uh, play around with uh, to create more uh, more stuff for your objects. Um, thinking about the pickups that we mo uh, made before, you could add other components in here, sort of uh, physics uh, emitters. Um, uh, we're just going through this. Um, yeah, so the impulse. Um, no, hang on. If I have a look. So um, yeah, here you go. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head right now. Um, but yeah, a radial force. There we go. So if you wanted um, these things to hit the player and um, then send an impulse so you could check if it hit the player, uh, fire an impulse, um, and then you, uh, have it blast the player somewhere. Um, you could have it affect the player how we did before with uh, shrinking or growing the player. Um, you could have it obviously damage the player. Um, thinking about different mechanics that you've seen in games um, and then f having a look at other games such as uh, maybe having these uh, flipping around um, from a different pivot so that um, it's sort of uh, it, all it does is rotates around every now and then and then does that just as some sort of platforming object uh, you could have them moving in and out um just use them to make some fun and interesting gameplay uh, essentially it so um that's the end of the tutorial if there's any questions uh let me know